Look who's with us once again, ladies and gentlemen, ex-wives. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ronnie well, Bennett. One of, those, one of those reality shows, something about the wives of some city. Oh, yeah. The, the what wives they of, What's the title? Uh, I don't know. The Real Housewives. of Real Housewives. Well, yeah. Okay, so... Um, what can we make ex-wives, real ex-wives? You know, you know what's terrible? What's terrible, if I can mention it quickly here, about that that term, the real housewives of this or the real housewives of that, isn't that an antiquated term? I mean, what? do do women who, who are, are married and maybe stay at home and take care of the kids, do they call themselves housewives anymore? I don't know. I have no idea. And I think it's only rich people can do that, and they probably have nannies. Well, I mean, they call them housewives, and they're not really, you know, the, the term is kind of antiquated, you know. Wife, the wives of whatever, but housewives, eh, that indicates a certain form of slavery. Uh, or I get a picture in my head of 1950s housewife. Yeah. With an a proper apron and all dressed up and her hair done, yeah, and you know, and cleaning the house, looking like she's on her way to lunch by today's standards. Right, right. So <laughs> you know, come on, folks, let's get with it. Housewives, I don't know, they got to come up with a better term. How about the sluts? The oh, come sluts on. Of, come well, on, because on. all these women no, are just don't go straight for that. <laughs> I'll go straight for that because that's the way they portray them. I don't know. I don't know. I've never seen the shows. I, know. I, so I, 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 I got hooked on one of them a long time ago, the the Real Housewives of uh, Los Angeles. Uh, not anymore, but I was watching it for a while, and I, I found it entertaining because, you know, in England, they don't call it reality shows. They say they call it scripted reality. And Just as bad. When, no, when they're giving away an award for reality <laughs> shows, they call it scripted reality. Just as bad as not doing it. Yeah, not well, stupid. anyway. Anyway. How you doing, kiddo? Everybody wants to know. I'm getting by. I'm getting by. You're getting by. Uh, yeah. we, were, we were talking before we went on, and I, I made the mistake by saying, and I said I knew you were going to get upset by it. Uh, but, no, you uh, didn't. But, but yes, I did. I said, I know that you won't, uh, 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 you'll take umbrage with this. Or whatever. Anyway, what I said was, you said, you're dying, and we know that. And I said, well, you know, people will tell you that uh, uh, we're all dying, you know. And then you got really mad at that because you say you hate to hear that. I've been there all my life until now. I have been one of those people that some people say we are all dying. That's not true. You don't think about it that way. Every human on earth pretends that they are the one immortal until they're not anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's a whole different thing when the medical people tell you yeah. uh -huh, there's nothing more we can do all of a sudden for some whatever period of time that they announce which by the way i don't think they know they do their best guess given their experience and, and knowledge of the subject um and you know they said that if i do this chemo that i start tomorrow that maybe six to eight months before i start having symptoms of the cancer um, I think that could just as well be two months or a year. It's, it's They're doing the best they can in trying to figure that out, but every person, every human body is different and will react different to the medication. But it changes your outlook entirely. For mm -hmm. instance, I don't know if I brought this up with you or not anymore, but I have a limited amount of time where before this I could pretend maybe I would become one of the ancients and live to be 95. Yeah. And now I can't pretend that anymore. So how do I choose the books I read? And speaking of Housewives of Wherever, am I still allowed to watch the trashy TV shows that I like? You know? <laughs> or is that a waste of time? I don't know how to make those decisions. Um, it's a, I, th There's a lot of things I would like to get all in order before I die so that the person who has to clean up behind me and my house and all of that stuff, won't have too tough a time. My God, there's a lot to do. And I've, and I've done all the big stuff, like the end-of-life documents, the will and the proxies and all of that. That stuff has all been done for more than a year. But it's um, all of the little stuff that, would, that she's going to have to hunt for everywhere if I don't make a 
may you know give her a little book of here's where you find all of this and um there are things like um i've known for the longest time that i no big deal make the phone calls and purchase my cremation i can't make myself do it i mean i i assume i will eventually but i can't make myself pick up the phone and do that um and sometimes but, but, you know a lot of people do that a lot of people do that before death or before they know they're going to die they they already have funeral plans yes, i understand you know, that. so it's not new i yeah. mean that but still now in a new position i'm having trouble fi- picking up the telephone to do that yeah uh, more than that i'm not i haven't even taken the time to look into it online yet um and you, you know, you know what I found. What I what, what, what I found interesting was your first thought uh, when I when when you first talked to me about this wasn't uh, I got to make funeral arrangements. I got to do this. I got to do that. Your first thought was, I'll never be able to see how Trump turned out. Yes. Oh, I am so pissed off about that. <laughs> I am so now, pissed off. And I had been saying that. For the longest, even before I knew I had cancer, man, I have I've got to let me live until I see the outcome of the Trump era. I want to know how it ends, or at least, you know, the end of him as president. It'll, it'll, it'll be many, many, many years, probably decades before we clean up behind him politically. But, um, man, I am pissed off about that. <laughs> It's not the thing I think I should be pissed off about in this circumstance, but it is. Well, you know, you will always, I, I don't know, maybe I would think about something like, gee, I'll never get to see the next season of Doctor Who or something like that, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, things like that have occurred to me, too. <laughs> yeah, you know, but uh, let's hope, the, the let's hope, is, let's hope all the shows. Let's I hope read. all the shows, let's hope now. all the shows you like are canceled <laughs> before you go. <laughs> Right. <laughs> but I still don't. It's the book problem there. You know, which ones to read and which ones do they all have to be serious or can I read a detective novel? <laughs> yeah. And the old question, how ripe should the bananas be when I buy them? Yeah. How much what? <laughs> how ripe should the bananas be when I buy them? Oh, well, you know, my mother's do- I took care of my mother during the last four months of her life when yeah. she was dying. Yeah. And when I met with her doctor the first time after I got to her place, he told me how he had explained to her what had happened and if she did this or if she did that. But she had approximately three or four months to live. And he told me that she, my mother sat there for a little while looking down and she thought about, I guess, what the doctor had been saying. And then she looked up and looked at him and said, are you telling me I shouldn't buy any green bananas? No, it's an old line. But I didn't know my mother was that funny, <laughs> and especially in the circumstance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I, I, um, gee, I, you know, I, as I say, you know, sometimes in this situation, I don't know what to say. You know, I mean, nobody uh, does. Nobody does. And, and somebody left a comment. So the fact that you're laughing while we were talking makes me feel good that I've done something. Yeah. Well, and somebody, one of the, my blog readers, left a note on one of my posts about the cancer and what's going on. He said that she wanted her friends and what family was left to come and be with her and talk and talk and talk and talk about everything under the sun. And I think that's, I crave being with people. And sometimes I get, I don't want to say depressed. I don't think I'm depressed, but I get fearful and I get just kind of beaten down and then I go meet a friend for lunch or I have a conversation with you or even a phone conversation with someone and I come away from it everything's fine yes I know what's happening I haven't forgotten that but I can handle that and I'll get on with what I have to do today it makes all the difference people make every kind of difference and that woman who left that that note on my blog, she's absolutely right. I want to talk about everything. I want to talk about Trump. I want to talk about Pittsburgh. I want to talk about books I'm reading or how to choose a book if you've got any good ideas and so on and so forth. Um, plus, I want you to let me talk about what I'm going through now and then too. And you don't have to do much but listen. You, there's no solution there's, that you can give me. Um, but you know, for now and for some period of time, I physically I feel terrific. Um, here's a little bit of a secret about this. 
because I feel so good and I've kind of just this week in the last two or three days, um, I've started to get that it doesn't that I, I that I want to live. I want to live for a lot longer and not that I didn't ever want feel that way, but I kind of accepted what had been told me. Now I'm feeling, damn, can I make this? How can I stretch this out a little longer? I'm not ready. Um, and then I know that, and then I start thinking, you know, what I want is they tell me I can hold off symptoms with this chemo for a good while, a little while, and um, and then I'll start having them. And I'm hoping that toward the end, I feel physically bad enough that I don't care anymore, that I want, I, that would take the fear away. But, well, there, that, yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting because I, you know, as I say, I've always had a fear of death. And so uh, uh, this is, makes me doubly uncomfortable for that. Okay. But to hell with how I feel. It's how you feel. That's really what, it, what it's all about, you know. Um, but uh, I, I paid attention to a lot of people who, who were dying and what they did with their end of life. And I found that, for instance, I think it was Ingrid Bergman who went back to Sweden and said goodbye to everybody. And I felt that really, rather than being hit by a truck and all of a sudden one day you're alive and the next day you're dead, she had time to go back and see the people she wanted to see or make peace with the people she wanted to make peace with, that there was, that, that the fact that she was dying and knew she was dying kind of became a blessing of sorts. Because, because you can put, a, you can put several, a, a period on your life, you know? Several people, including you, um, have said, can I come visit you? And, um, and absolutely. I mean, fortunately, I now live, you know, not in teeny tiny Manhattan apartment anymore. I have a bedroom and a bathroom. It's almost like being in your own hotel suite. And absolutely, people, you know, people who live far away, I'm not getting on an airplane. I just don't have it in me. Airplanes are just so awful to fly in anymore. Right. right. And um, and I'm not, you know, there was a first thought of maybe I'd go to New York. I have lots of friends there. It's the city where I really, truly belong. It is my home. Um, but I just, I just can't for a number of reasons. So having a few people come here to visit for a few days, like Bergman going to Sweden, is just terrific. It's just wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, so anyway, your doctors. Have you seen them since we talked last? And uh, what are they? If so, what have they been saying about all of this? It, everything is the same. I've got this little piece of paper here that I start this chemo tomorrow. Yeah. And I had asked about the chemo. The point of the chemo is it can't cure the two tumor locations but it can slow the growth so I have a longer period of asymptomatic life before cancer symptoms yeah, start kicking yeah, in. Yeah. And it says here, I had asked about I, the, uh, the side effects because it's a different mixture of chemicals than I had before that did kill the cancer for a while. And they're fairly mild. Um, it's... Uh, I might have some flu symptoms for a couple of days. There are two different ones that they're giving me at a time. And some mild, quote, in quotes, um, nausea. And the other one, I will have a, I could have a sensitivity to cold and some neuropathy. And the thing is that they, they don't know. Each person has a different reaction. Right. I could get all right. of these or not. I could have, they might be heavy. They might be light. Um, but that sounds to me like tolerable stuff compared to some. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I can manage that. The other big thing, change the subject. Well, I, I, the, we should change the subject because life goes on, and so do you. And you're on. not you're not going and anywhere soon. I want to show you something. Okay. I, what, when we hang up, what I am going to do hmm. is vote. I live in a vote by mail state, and this is my ballot. Okay. Well, backwards now, but um, two sides. It's a big ballot this year. And, um, and I've done my homework, so I know what I'm voting for. So I'm going to fill in all the little boxes when we're done and send off my, my ballot. Everybody needs to go vote. Every, this may be the most important election of our lives, old people's lives, that long. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, it's kind of, a, 
I feel a little bit different than you because I live in New York, where whether I vote or not, I know it's going to go New York City. It's going to go liberal. All right. Uh, but local races are certain. That's what everybody thought in the last presidential election. Well, no, here, you know, no, here's what happened in the presidential election. Let's be honest about it. Uh, Hillary won by three million votes in the popular vote, but it was an electoral vote. And what I don't like is the electoral vote because my vote gets kind of bundled down to like 78 votes or whatever the electoral college is. And I don't feel it's one man, one vote, okay, or one person. So that means vote. you shouldn't vote just because you don't well, like the I don't, way you would I do don't, it? I don't feel in the presidential race that I, I knew that New York was going to go for Hillary. There was no question about that, okay? And overwhelmingly, New York State went for Hillary. So that means you shouldn't vote? You haven't answered my question. Well, I voted, but... It doesn't matter if I vote. My vote does not count. Yes, it does. What if everybody who voted the way you do decided that their vote didn't matter? Well. What the, would happen then? Well, then uh, somebody would win by two votes, and that's because there were four votes. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, the the point I'm making is is that the local races. And there well, are good well, arguments for well, it. Well, now is not the time to well, argue it. No. Right now we have an important election. Where Afterwards, I, yeah, go work But for where that. I'm going with this is, in this particular case, local races are incredibly important, and yes, one vote are. does count, you know. Yes. And uh, and so therefore, uh, I will, uh, I guess, uh, go a block and vote. <laughs> you know, See, uh, I don't even have to leave my desk. I don't know where I it is. I got to find. Mail. I got to find out where it is. But uh, 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 and they always spell my name wrong, so I they have a hard time finding me. But you know, anyway, I and then I had to fill out forms because I wasn't. Part the of same. your name? Do they spell wrong? One N. Oh, see, every time I tell people my name, I yeah. always say Bennett with two N's and two T's because yeah. of that. Some yeah. people leave the second T off, too. Right, right. So I, I uh, my name I've always had trouble with. Sometimes they put a T in there, you know, whatever. Uh, but they had it wrong, so they corrected it, and then I got my mail, and they didn't correct it. You know, it, it's it's been always been a pain in the ass. But anyway, uh, you know, I think that the local races are important and i think uh while i know that here in harlem uh certainly our uh congressional representative has never been a republican i mean it was adam clayton powell and then it was uh what's his name uh um oh god Don't um, remember. Uh, you know and then it, now it's another guy now, it's Doesn't been three Adam guys. Powell sound historical? I mean, it was a long. I was. I lived there when he was a congressman from Harlem, but it seems it just feels like so long ago now. It's that he's become an historical figure. That well, I know, live on Adam the, Clayton Powell Jr. <laughs> Boulevard. Thank you very much for that extra long name on my <laughs> mailbox. Yeah. Instead of First Street, you mean? <laughs> well, I write. I say Seventh Avenue. Fuck it, because I. To begin with, Adam Clayton Powell Jr. was a crook, all right? Why are we naming a street after him? At that one block down, we got Malcolm X Boulevard. I would rather have that on my mail, okay? Well, that isn't where you bought or rented an apartment. Exactly. Yeah. Adam Clayton, it's not just Adam Clayton Powell Boulevard. Can't you it's Adam write Clayton ACP Powell Jr.? Jr. <laughs> yeah, they, sometimes they do ACPJR, okay? Or ACP. Uh, mm -hmm. But I've just put 7th Avenue because the post office knows that address. So, yeah. you know. And if I tell a cab driver, take me down to 7th Avenue and, and uh, 116th, they know exactly what I'm saying. You know, so uh, these are honorary names they gave these streets. There are a lot of them around Manhattan. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's even a cousin, Brucey Way. You know, really? yeah, yeah, uh, for, for a disjunct. Are you and I the last two people who know who he was? I, 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 no, he still, is still alive and knows who he is, so, you know. Uh, but uh, anyway, um, so, so it, he, there are a couple of things I guess we should talk about in the time remaining, one of which is Pittsburgh, since uh, you became Jewish and I am Jewish. And you're probably more Jewish than I am. 
because converts are always more Jewish than the real Jews. Uh, how do you how do you relate to that? Well, this morning I'm just embarrassed that he's foisting himself on the funerals. Yeah, I'm yeah. so embarrassed. I mean, he embarrasses any thinking human being every single day, but. But that's just awful. He's been just, asked not to come by the mayor of Pittsburgh yes. and by the and, rabbi of, of the temple. And, and to insinuate yourself and bring a whole entourage of, of people, you know, that, and, and apparently from what I heard this morning, they've cordoned off the area around the, the temple, be preparing for the president and his safety. And people just want to go and have their funeral, you know. And that's just, and especially when, the mayor asked him not to come. And the mayor didn't say not come altogether. Wait a week after the funerals and come is what well, he did, said. Didn't Obama and, in a situation similar to this wait a week rather than... Okay. Inter, uh, didn't Obama, when there was a tragedy like this, I can't remember which one, I b remember him waiting a week before he went somewhere. I think other because presidents and out have done of, that altogether. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but there's... Th that's just embarrassing. This was... I mean, it's such a horrible, horrible tragedy that it takes a long time to, to, I don't know, internalize, it, think about it, work it through your mind, um, and and I just, I, I just can't believe how, how many that people he's got this insensitive, yeah. and and I know perfectly well he is, but I can't believe he is this time. And it well, remember that black church that got bombed, and mm -hmm. how many how many blacks died in that one. I think that was somewhere around the same amount of people, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, this is the largest ever in the United States of killing of Jews. Well, of Jews, but I'm saying that not the racially, I think that the bombing of the black church was equivalent. I, I, I seem to remember the number 11 or 12. You mean 12. in the 60s? No, a few years back, just a few oh, years okay. back. Yeah. All right, but I thought we were talking about a Jewish hate rather than well, black. Well, I mean, but, look, let's be honest. This is the great, greatest mass killing. This is I thought of this yesterday. The greatest mass killing of Jews since the Holocaust. At least in this country. It, it, well, no. I mean, I think. I'm not sure, but anyway. um, I mean, you'd have to. I, I don't think it matters all that much to be correct about that right now. But it's just such a whole. It's such, it's so hateful, so awful, and in this, obviously, from all the coverage they've been talking about of the neighborhood the temple is in, and the people who go, and um, and what a cohesive, long-term neighborhood that goes back what a hundred years or more of, of a sensibility that people who live there have about their about their home, their neighborhood, their community, and to just barge in. It seems to me it's a terribly private thing for them, and to have the president just barge in uninvited is a, is just. Most oh. presidents yeah. have waited till after the funerals to go down and pay their respects because. Well, you see, I'm so cynical. I just think he does it because he can't stand a day without being the center of attention. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, he co-ops every event he possibly can, and what I love, you know, there's an old saying. And it's a saying that I've lived by and everybody else should live by that if, if you can't be sincere, at least fake it. Uh, <laughs> and fake it convincingly. He cannot, <laughs> he cannot convincingly do that kind of thing. I mean, when he can't he, even read the teleprompter. Well, he reads a teleprompter <laughs> like he's a kid being asked to get up in class and read something from a book he didn't want to read. Yeah. Okay, uh, and he he just reads it, and he has no ability at conveying sympathy. I mean, Obama was very good at it. Uh, even George Bush tried his best. But Trump, you know he's reading it, but he doesn't feel it, you know. And it, it's just, it's, it's embarrassing. It's just it's, embarrassing. It's, we don't need your fucking sympathy. And by the way, you're still not washing off the taint that your rhetoric has caused an atmosphere that creates this kind of event. 
Well, he's already denied that, and so is Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Well, they always keep saying. bringing up uh, Bernie Sanders' guy uh, shot a uh, senator. Yeah, but he didn't die. And secondly, uh, Bernie That's Sanders the- Bernie Sanders wasn't running around uttering incendiary statements. You and know. there's no comparison. That's what is a, what, he at what no is, point yeah. did Bernie Sanders ever what give a, a sense of permission for this kind of act. Trump has, you know. This is it. Well, the two of us are talking. There aren't words for this kind of thing. There just aren't words. Yeah, and and it's hard for us to talk about it because everybody knows what we're going to think about it. You know, I would love to know how some right-winger justifies uh, all this animosity this man has created in this country. And as, as I say, his number one job as president, or any president's job, is to protect the American public. I think we will agree with that. That's the main mission, okay, Mm -hmm. above any other. Uh, Whether you protect them by military or whatever, to the protection of the public. When you say incendiary things that give a sense of permission to a mentally deranged human being to go out and either mail bombs or go into a synagogue and start shooting, you're violating that very tenet of what you should be living up to, and that is protecting the American public. And mm-hmm. and he should be ashamed of himself. And he, it, he doesn't know shame. He it, doesn't know that exists. Listen, he would have won. He would have even won me over. Well, not really, but he would have won a lot of people over if he at least had said, you know, maybe what I've said has given the sense of permission to people, and maybe I have to bring my. Uh, uh, ratchet down my rhetoric, which I thought was, you know, just politics, but maybe there's more to it than that. And everybody would have said, good for you, but he would never do that because he doesn't have that in him. He doesn't believe it. He doesn't believe it, no. You know, and Jared Kushner, who is a uh, a devout Orthodox Jew, Oh, he took a phone call yeah, on Saturday. Did he take a phone call on Saturday? From the president, yes. Uh, and anyway, he he is well, he's more orthodox than you and I are, okay? <laughs> There's that. <laughs> Why he isn't informing him that now would be a bad time to go down there and he should wait a week. and that, Maybe he doesn't think it is a bad time. We don't know. He never speaks about anything. Well, it, well I mean, Jared, as, 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 any... Uh, Orthodox Jew would probably be able to give him counsel on this. You know what I'm saying? But no. I don't know anything about the man. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Except that uh, he uses his position to try to get more money to save his real estate business. Well, well neither the, neither do, do the rest of us, so, you know, um, uh, because he never says anything. I think I heard him speak the other day. I'm glad he doesn't speak. He has a very ineffective voice, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's just, you know, it, but how do you think the midterms are going to turn out? You know, I don't want, I don't, I'm not interested in prognostication. What I am going to do is sit up as late as I can <laughs> and watch all the returns. Um, one of the things about living on the West Coast after nearly half a century gone is that when you're ready to settle down around dinner time and watch TV and see all the return, you already got some coming in. You know, they already are predicting who's won Eastern states. So you don't have to wait until 10, 11 o'clock. Well, I at remember night. when I was working at KMEL in San Francisco, and it was the, uh, I think it was Reagan who was running at the time. I, I, again, for the, I think the second time or something like that. Anyway, uh, I was living in <laughs> California, but I was going to go do uh, election coverage. I was starting at 7 o'clock because at 8 o'clock the polls closed in California. And as I'm driving to the station, the election has been called for Ronald Reagan. <laughs> and I just. I thought they weren't I, supposed to do that. I, I don't I keep just, track of I, that. I didn't know whether I should just turn around and go home. <laughs> it was a waste of you my really time. You really feel bad for the people in Hawaii. I mean, by the time their polls close, it is long decided. Oh, yeah. No matter oh, yeah. how close it is. Yeah. So, you know, I mean. It's nice to know when it gets to California, they go, oh, that's the pivotal state. But it's never the pivotal state. Florida is the pivotal state. Well, Ohio's the Ohio pivotal and state. And some others, too, yeah, you know. But, uh, it's, but you're right what you said earlier. It's the local 
the local uh, selections make make are going to make a huge difference or not uh, this time. Yeah. Um, and you know, everybody on television, all the pundits are prognosticating, and I don't think there's any way to call this. Nor do I think we should spend so much time doing that. We've gone way over our normal time, but let me just bring this up, and then we, I guess, we got to go. This guy okay. Gillum, who's running for governor of Florida, Florida who's running yes. a very, very tight race. Okay, um, uh, the president today came out and start said he should he should just quit the race because he he committed a criminal act by paying oh, eighteen yeah. hundred dollars paying right? eighteen hundred dollars for tickets to hamilton right yes. uh i'm sorry uh, tickets to hamilton to begin with go for about 1200 but you know he's overpaying for him what is the big deal whether this guy got tickets to hamilton or not and how <clears> does that make him any less capable of being governor of the state of florida and we could get into more what about ism with all that, uh, yeah, uh, with all of the president's uh, suspicious economic activity, financial activity. Yeah, well, that we'll never find out about because he won't f let us see his tax returns. You know, I, I, what I don't get, and this goes back to something that he doesn't even know the existence of shame, is that this morning he announced that he wants to take away birthright citizenship of children of of immigrants who are born here and the constitution says right there i think it's the 14th anybody born within the borders of the united states is a citizen and he said he can do this with just an executive order even though it's in the constitution but the thing that got to me is that which he's wrong about but the thing that most got to me is he said that we're the only country in the world that has birthright citizenship canada mexico almost all of europe has the same thing and he's done this kind of thing on every topic you can think of over and over and over again, outright lies. And nothing happens. Nobody cares. Yeah. I don't get that. Yeah, well. Hey, listen. We, yes. we went way over time, but, you know, why not? What you have to say is I find totally interesting. And, uh, we both talk too much. We well, we, we, we well, I talk for a living, and you write for a living, and <laughs> occasionally sure. you talk for a living. So you know, it's good either way, darling. Good talking to you. You you yeah. look, in, you look great. Okay, that's all I can say. I feel terrific. That's one of the hardest things about this is that, I, physically, I feel wonderful. Yeah, I I just hate when you go to a funeral, and the body is lying there. And they say, doesn't he look great? <laughs> and you go, not particularly because he doesn't have a pulse and he's at room temperature, you know? I mean, what do you mean he looks great, you know? How many times have you been to a funeral where they, where the casket was open? Uh, on maybe one occasion. Yeah, I, that's what I, I, I find. I find that kind of... <laughs> doesn't happen much I days. find it kind of creepy. But I have been in a room with, a, with my best friend who had just died, and that was that was not pleasant, you know. Um, but we won't get into that. You're terrific, and I love you, dear. And uh, you you uh, you stay stay looking healthy, and we'll talk to you in two weeks from now, Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.